Hi, I'm Terry Cox. I'm the Communications Director at the California Statewide Law Enforcement Association. And with me is Jim Vitko. Jim, you are one of six attorneys here at CSLEA. And you work out of the Southern California office. Some of our members haven't met you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I've actually been with uh, CSLEA since uh, the later part of 2008. And uh, I'm one of three attorneys down south. Um, a lot of people haven't met us. Unless they've been in trouble, we're kind of one of the better kept secrets. That's kind of what we want to talk about today, a frequently asked question by our members. What do you do when you get in trouble, the discipline area? Progressive discipline is actually kind of a process. Um, and what it's designed for initially is for a supervisor to identify problems with an employee or in the more extreme cases if there's a serious issue where the employee has done something that is either criminal or has had an issue where it jumps directly to uh, adverse action. Now, uh, for most employees, if they are having issues with a supervisor, it usually starts with what we call the preventative stage where the supervisor might call them in, have a discussion with them. How can I uh, make your environment such as to where you're going to improve, maybe change work duties, or uh, location or something along that line that might assist them. Um, if that doesn't work, then it moves into uh, a more corrective stage and that might be the point where we at CSLEA get involved. In a corrective stage, what you'll have is a supervisor that will oftentimes uh, ask for a meeting and during the course of that meeting, uh, they'll set certain expectations, they'll ask for explanations about what the behavior is, and in essence, tell them that either it's going to improve or there's going to be some consequences that occur. The important thing for our members to realize at that point is there might be a justification for representation at those meetings. If there's a meeting that is being set up for the purpose of either proceeding to adverse action uh, or uh, that is being used as the basis for that adverse action, then they're entitled to representation and that's a real good time for them to call us. At the corrective stage, it's also important to take very seriously what the employer is telling you. Even though you may have a memorandum that's coming your way and you may figure that's all that's going to come out of it, you also have the possibility that that action that they're taking is going to be used in a cumulative way and it could result in more serious uh, discipline if the individual doesn't correct the behavior. Listen to what the employer is telling you and if you are feeling as if there is either the it's not justified or if you're feeling that uh, you need to have, uh, have a representative basis there based on the fact that it might go further, adverse action, then it's probably a good idea to give us a call and let us advise you as to how to proceed. And when in doubt, our members should feel free to call you. We, we really pride ourselves in the fact that we have six attorneys who will pick up a phone the minute a member calls. That's one of the things about CSLEA that you won't get with most of the other unions is when you call us, you're going to get a lawyer on the phone. Uh, you are going to be able to discuss your problems and we are there for you during the entire process. One of the things that I tell people frequently is the earlier the better sometimes because when I can get involved with things right from the beginning, it makes it a whole lot easier as the process goes on as opposed to having someone maybe do something that they should have at an early stage and have that being used as the basis for more serious action down the line. Is there a difference between something called formal discipline and informal discipline? Yeah. Uh, formal discipline is initiated by the employer through the state personnel board and that is going to impact you in a serious way. By that I mean it's going to involve a suspension, it's going to involve uh, a cut in pay, it's going to involve a demotion, it's going to, uh, in the more extreme cases, involve a dismissal. Informal action uh, is, as I said, it's more of a corrective or a preventative measure. It's designed to let you know what the expectations are and 
Normally, that won't result in anything beyond a corrective memo. But as I said before, uh, it's possible that if the behavior doesn't stop, or if there are other like behaviors, that that could be used in a cumulative way, and you can find yourself facing some very serious disciplinary action on the formal side. And you don't want that to happen? <laughs> no, you don't want that to happen at all. And so the earlier our members call you about a problem on the job, the better? Absolutely. Of course, some of the other things that we can do for them, even at the early stages, is we can instruct them as to how to write a rebuttal to corrective memoranda. And as I said, if there are issues that involve EEO, uh, employee rights uh, involving discrimination, or if there are other problems between a supervisor and an employee, it's a good idea to have us involved. I can direct them the way to go with those issues as well. And in some cases, we'll sit down and we'll work with the employer and the employee to help resolve it. And is this available to every member? That's one of the things that comes with your membership. And it's one, we are one of the few unions that will actually supply that kind of help for you. As we wrap it up, is there anything you haven't brought up about discipline that you want to mention? I can't emphasize enough that people should take it very seriously. Um, a lot of times it becomes a little bit of a war of wills rather than um, people realizing that this could have far-reaching implications. And once again, call us as uh, those issues develop. We can, uh, we can advise you as to how to proceed, how to document things, and how to protect your rights. All right. Thank you, Jim. As thank always, you. if you have any questions, call us at either office. You can email us with questions or even suggestions on how we can better serve you as our member. We do look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you.